Good afternoon, grade 11s, and welcome back after uh, the last time that we've uh, been here is July, and I know that you have learned quite a lot since then, and today we are tackling some of the concepts in trigonometry, which counts for 50 marks in the final examination for grade 11. And there are moves afoot to have that also 50 marks in the grade 12 examination. Currently, the, the trigonometry counts for 40 marks in the grade 12 examination. And there are talks to, uh, that it will be raised to 50 marks as well. So it is a rather an important uh, topic. I trust that you have in front of you or with you the booklet the, that we have provided, Mathematics for Grade 11, the telematics learning resource, and that you are going to use it throughout. Now, the trigonometry has got a lot of concepts, a lot of uh, basic knowledge that we need in order to handle the problems that we will fa be faced with in trigonometry. So let me start with a few of these uh, concepts. First of all, the basic trigonometry happens in, of course, the Cartesian plane. And the Cartesian plane is nothing else but the space in which we work, the two-dimensional space in which we work. And that space is, has got a horizontal axis and a vertical axis, which intersects at the point zero. On the horizontal axis, the x values are represented. On the vertical axis, the y values will be represented. The right-hand side of the horizontal axis start at 0, and then we move anticlockwise. Very important, positive angles are measured in an anticlockwise direction to 90 degrees, to 180 degrees, to 270 degrees, and to 360 degrees. And this forms the Cartesian plane in which we will draw our sketches, etc. Furthermore, these four uh, sections are called the quadrants. The first, with the, that one on the top right hand side, the, the first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, the fourth quadrant. Also, these quadrants have properties for the angles which will be drawn in the quadrants. Now, of course, we work with trigonometric ratios, and these ratios in the different quadrants have different natures. Namely, it's either positive or it is negative. And surely we all know what these letters stand for in the caste diagram. I know in our schools we have all sorts of uh, names for these uh, acronyms, all stations to Cape Town, etc. But it's called the caste diagram. And of course we know that the A, for instance, stands for all the trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Sign is po uh, positive in the second quadrant. And the reason, of course, uh, being that the nature of the functions are uh, derived from the sides of a right angle triangle. And depending on where the side of the right angle triangle is, that uh, defines the nature of the function, either positive or negative. The angle in the first quadrant will be an acute angle, and in this instance, we will call it theta, but it could also be x, it could also be alpha, it could also be beta. Uh, any of those uh, variables are used to notate an angle in the first quadrant. An angle in the second quadrant would be 180 minus an acute angle, because then it will lie in the second quadrant because the second quadrant ends at 180. So if we subtract an acute angle from that, it will lie in the second quadrant. And the general way of writing an angle in the second quadrant 
is 180 minus theta. Note that I say the general way because it can also be written as 90 plus theta. Okay, but the general way is 180 minus theta, and there's a specific reason for that. And I know that in class we have already, or you have already dealt with why uh, it is 180 minus theta. In the third quadrant, 180 plus theta, because 180 plus an acute angle will lie in the third quadrant. And in the third, fourth quadrant, the general way of writing an angle or naming an angle would be th 360 minus an acute angle, which will be in the fourth uh, quadrant. I said, generally, these angles in the different quadrants may also be named according to the vertical axis, but then into play comes other concepts. Okay, let's continue. So, when I draw an angle in the first quadrant, the hypotenuse, the, remember the angle in the first quadrant, is uh, the angle theta. Now, the hypotenuse goes into the quadrant and always but always, because the trig ratios I get from right angle triangles. Therefore, from the end of the hypotenuse, I move uh, towards the x-axis, perpendicularly to the x-axis. An angle in the second quadrant, again named theta, but now, remember I said in the beginning, the angle is measured anticlockwise and always from the right uh, side uh, where, where, where zero is. So that would be the angle uh, theta, which is now in the second quadrant. And again, if I want to know anything about the trig ratios of that theta, I need a right angle triangle. And the hypotenuse of that right angle triangle goes into the quadrant and again perpendicularly to the horizontal axis on which the x values will be uh, represented perpendicularly to the horizontal axis. That black uh, dot that we see there, we all know that uh, that will be called the reference angle. Why the reference angle? Because when I want any three ratios of theta, I refer to that specific angle which is uh, in, inside of the right angle triangle. In the third quadrant, that is how an angle will, will be represented in the third quadrant. So any angle that is greater than 180 but less than 270 will lie in the third quadrant, of which that will be the hypotenuse. Again, I draw my right-angled triangle with the hypotenuse into the, the, the um, quadrant and again perpendicularly to the horizontal axis. Perpendicular so that I have a right angle triangle, and again, that acute angle inside of that right angle triangle will be the reference angle for theta, meaning if I want any value, say the tan of theta, I refer to that angle with a black dot, which is the reference angle. And in the fourth quadrant, that would uh, represent an angle in the fourth quadrant, meaning that is the 360 degrees minus an acute angle, which will be an angle in the fourth quadrant. And also, that is the reference angle, meaning if I want, say, the sine of theta, I refer to that black dot, which will be the reference angle. And may I also say now that the sign stays the opposite over the hypotenuse, and that is why in the fourth quadrant, sign is negative. Remember the cast diagram? C will be here. 
meaning the cosine is positive in this quadrant because the cosine, a reference angle, cosine, adjacent ang uh, side over the hypotenuse, and the adjacent side is positive. Of course, the hypotenuse is always positive for any uh, of these quadrants, okay? For any of these quadrants, hypotenuse always positive, and then depending on where my right angle triangle is, uh, the other side will be positive, negative, etc. Some of the tools that will be used uh, in the, this, the uh, simplification of the problems and the working with the problems, I've already mentioned some of them, uh, the reference angle, negative angles, and of course the ratios are influenced by the negative angles. If I, at this stage, can just uh, show you what is meant by a negative angle, because we have dealt with positive angles now. The, there is my Cartesian plane and the axes. A positive angle is measured anti-clockwise and a negative angle is measured clockwise. So that will be a negative angle. Say the negative angle theta and now there are properties that we need to know about the trig ratio of a negative angle and the relationship to the trig ratio of that same uh, positive angle. If they have the same magnitudes, then there is a relationship between, say, the sine of the negative angle and the sine of the positive angle. And of course, in my reduction formulas, which we will be uh, doing shortly, I need to reduce all angles to ratios in terms of the uh, positive angles. So I know that your teachers have already dealt with the negative angles. In this case, for instance, the sine of the negative angle would be equal to negative the sign of the positive angle. Okay. Uh, there are special angles. Um, there is the, the theorem of Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem that some people refer to, which we use in the trigonometry. We use algebraic techniques uh, to simplify and to solve algebraic uh, uh, um, uh, excuse me, uh, algebraic, um, trigonometric ratios, trigonometric uh, expressions, etc. And of course, we use identities. Identities is uh, crudely said uh, uh, an equation that is all, that holds for any value, for any the value of any variable. For instance, we know that the most common one, the tan of an angle is equal to the sine of the angle over the cos of an angle. That, for instance, is an identity. Okay, those are some of the tools that we will be needing. If I also go at this stage to another of the tools, uh, which is, was mentioned, the special angles. And of course, we know that special angles, uh, when we refer to special angles, we think about the 30 degrees, the 60 degrees, the 45 degrees. But remember, the angles on the axes are also special angles. Though That would be the angles on the axes, which I refer to, the zero, the 90 degrees, the 180 degrees, and the 270 degrees, as well as the 360 degrees. These would also be special angles. But these special angles I deal with in terms of my graphs, which is an easier way to deal with these special angles. The special angles that I refer to here is the 45 degrees, which I uh, mentioned, which comes from an isosceles triangle. 
Now, in an isosceles triangle, if it is a right angle triangle, because we can only work with trig ratios in a right angle triangles. So the, in a right angle triangle, if the, angle, if the triangle is also isosceles, then the angles must be 45 degrees. Did that sink in a, a little bit? If I have a right angle triangle, and it is isosceles, then the other angles must be equal to 45 degrees. Isosceles meaning these two sides are equal. Now, very important, we use one, the values one and one, to indicate that they are equal, equal in size. But it can also be two and two, or three and three. Any values that uh, are the same will denote the, 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 the right angles. And of course, the hypotenuse we get by using one of our tools, the theorem of Pythagoras. The other special angles we get from an equilateral triangle. Okay, And I have, just to save time, completed the, the triangle, but let us look how it comes about. If it is equilateral, meaning all the sides are equal, but it also means that the angles are all 60 degrees. All 60 degrees because of the, inside, the sum of the inside angles must be 60, must be 180 degrees. Therefore, the three, each one of them will be 60. Now, a property of the equilateral triangle is that if I draw from any of the vertices a line that is perpendicular to the opposite side, yeah, and I've chosen to draw from that to, uh, vertex to the opposite side, perpendicular, then that line bisects that side and it also bisects that angle. And that is why I now have two equal sides in the equilateral triangle. And again, I have chosen to name them or to, to give them the values of one and one. I could also give them the values of two and two or three and three, as long as they are equal. So then the sum of these two will give me the other two sides. If it is three and three, that will be 6 and that will be 6. And again, I use the theorem of Pythagoras to calculate the other side uh, of the right angle triangle. So I have two right angle triangles again, giving me the 30 degrees and the 60 degrees and those values which I use when I work with special angles. Okay, so those are a lot of the tools that we need in order to handle the, uh, the trigonome trigonometric um, um, identities, the trigonometric uh, simplifications, etc. And there are a lot more, but the time does not allow to go into all of the details of all the tools that we need. That, and I am sure that you have already, in your classes, uh, dealt with uh, most of them. So at this stage, I want to go to some of the, 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 the examples that is in the resource, uh, which I referred to right in the beginning, and which I want you to open now, or to have ready. And the first one that I wish to deal with if we can, if you can page to page 10, that is where the trigonom trigonometry starts. And we have this particular problem there. I hope it is all clear to you. We must simplify fully. 
Simplify fully means that we go ahead, we simplify as far as we get, and normally we, our answer will be one trigonometric ratio. Sometimes the question will also state simplify to one trigonometric ratio, or uh, in a lot of cases we get a single value for the simplification of that. Now, like any other place in mathematics, when we have a problem, before we just start writing down, I like to scan the problem first to see what techniques will I employ in order to simplify or to do this sum. Now, the technique here is called uh, reduction formulas. And it means that I must reduce these angles to, a, to uh, acute angles because these angles are now in the, it's drawn in the Cartesian plane. So using the tools that we already have, I first look at where the angle is and then I get to, to look at what the relationship between that angle and um, the, the nature of, 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 of the trig ratio, whether it is positive or negative. This one, for instance, 90 degrees minus x. That would be my 90 degrees. And the x signifies an acute angle. So 90 degrees minus x will be in the first quadrant. But one of those tools, if we can recall quickly, one of the tools mentioned complementary angles. And when we work with a vertical axis, the, two, the 90 and the 270, remember I also said that um, the angles can be named after the vertical axis, but then something else comes into play. And this is exactly what now what comes into play is the complementary angles because 90 degrees minus x and x itself is complementary. If I can just show you quickly here, for instance, if that is my right angle triangle and I make this angle x, then surely this angle is 90 degrees minus x. Let's just take another pen and hope that it will be better. So, let me just quickly say, make these uh, sides a b, and, a, b, and C. Then, the sign of the angle x, which is in this case opposite over hypotenuse, which is B over C. But B over C, what is that of that angle? Because I ref when I work with trig ratios, I must have an angle to which I refer. So B over C, in relation to that angle, if I refer to that angle, then B is the adjacent side to the over the hypotenuse. And we all know that Adjacent over hypotenuse will be the cosine of that particular angle. Okay? Just that quickly, the relationship between the vertical axes and the co-functions. We call it the co-ratios. So in this case, how do I simplify so the sign of that? I first identify where the angle is, and then... I determine whether, in this case, it will be complementary angle, so it becomes the co-function of the co-function of x, because I must reduce it to something in terms of a to an angle in terms of x. 180 plus x, where will that angle be? It will surely be in the third quadrant, eh, coming from my first uh, slides. Third quadrant, 
180 plus x, cosine in the, in the third quadrant according to the cast diagram. Cosine in the third quadrant will be negative. And because it is 180, it remains the cosine of x. The function, the trig ratio, remains the same. When I work with 180, when I work with a horizontal axis, if my angle is described in terms of the horizontal axis, the functions remain the same. That is already an acute angle, so I keep the tan of x, cosine of x, and now, whenever I have, let me see it, when I have a reduction, for, a reduction formulas, normally the degrees is in front. 180, 90, 180, 360, etc., etc. But as soon as I have the variable in front, the x value, and the degrees at the back, and I have negative in between, then I must realize that I'm working with a negative angle here. If it is positive in, uh, in between, it doesn't matter because 180 plus x and x plus 180 is the same thing. But as soon as I have the x in front and the degrees at the back, I know I'm working with a negative angle, and therefore I need to change this to a positive angle. And the only way in mathematics, anywhere where I, where I change a negative to a positive, is either by multiplying with a negative 1, or taking out negative 1 as a common factor. And that is what I'm going to do here. So taking out negative 1, I'm using a square bracket just because there's a, a round bracket already. Taking out negative 1, and I'm left with plus 180 minus x. So I'm writing it in the form of the others. All right, continue. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. There is still... Multiply with sine of that negative angle. My apologies for that, but the sine is still there in front. So here I have minus the cosine squared of x. Remember, in one of the tools, there was algebraic methods. So the algebraic methods come into place here. If I can just go back quickly. Uh, there we have algebraic techniques, the second last bullet. Uh, so I've just multiplied it, and that's negative cos squared. Re keep the plus sign, and here's the identity, the last it's one of the tools that I refer to, tan of x would be sine of x over cosine of x, and Normally, when I simplify expressions, then I'm tr I try to work all of them, rework all of them to sine and cosine. That is why I change the, the, the tan of x to sine over cosine. Multiply with the cosine of x over 1. Again, just a technique. Soon as I work with a fraction, I write the others that I must multiply with, it, with, with the fraction, also as a fraction. Multiply with, my mistake was there, remember that's the sign of a negative angle, will become negative the sign of a positive angle. And the positive angle now is 180 minus the x. Okay. This it might seem as if we have taken the negative towards the front of the sign. That's not what happens. This is the relationship between a negative angle and a positive angle. And sine of a negative angle becomes the negative, the sine of the positive angle. 
I'm not going to dwell on that uh, further. So minus cosine squared of x, this is plus times there is negative, so I have negative. The cosine of x will go into the cosine of x as well as there, and we say we cancel. So I'm left with the sine of x times the sine of x because that part, the negative, I multiplied with a positive, but now this is in the second quadrant, 180 minus x, and we know that the angle in the second quadrant, sine, is positive. So I have actually, what I have there is negative times the sine of x, if I reduce that part to x, and that is why the negative uh, multiply with a positive. So I have here, now, a, a, a great skill, um, grade 11s, is to, to, look, to, 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 to look where to I'm working. So if I can see here, if I can uh, assume where do I work, I'm working towards sine squared and cosine squared. And I should know that one of the identities, again, very uh, popular one, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So I know that I'm working towards that. That is why I'm taking out the negative 1 as a common factor. Again, algebraic techniques. I'm left with cosine squared of x plus, and that is also the sine squared of x, which will equal to negative 1 okay, as an answer. So in the simplification of this one, it boiled down to a single um, value and not to a single um, trigonometric uh, function. So that is the first one. Second, also on that page, let us look at uh, number 5.2. Right. Again, I need, I can see that I'm going to work with special angles here because I'm given degrees and the fact that the sum says prove without using a calculator. Right. Now, um, students, learners, Grade 11s, we all know, and the examiners also know, that the calculators that you use, that is given nowadays, can do this. Okay? But please, if the sum says without a calculator, you need to show all your working. In fact, right at the beginning of any question paper, it says show all your calculations. Yeah? But just as a reminder, especially here where it says without a calculator. Remember then that we must use uh, other techniques than a calculator. Now, either in trigonometry, it means use sketches, or it means that the angles that are given are special angles, either one of those. Proof without using a calculator, is that is what it means. I must use a sketch, or I must use this uh, properties of special angles. Now again, I can see that I'm, or I should be able to see that I'm going to work with special angles here. Let us just again advance to the special angles which we had here. Now, just like before, I determine in which quadrant that particular angle is. Okay. Some of us 
want to go directly to the acute angle. This is just another way of asking this particular question. But now the angle was given and we must rewrite the value of the angle in term or similarly to these, the ways that in which angles are written in the different quadrants. So 350 degrees, 15 degrees, will be in the fourth quadrant. Right? And the way that an angle in the normally, the way that an angle in the third, fourth quadrant is written is 360 minus an acute angle, which we call theta in the beginning. But now we have a specific value. So that would be the sine of 360 minus 45 degrees right, in terms of an acute angle. 210 degrees will be in the third quadrant, right? Because it's between 180 and 270. That is why I know 210 will be in the third quadrant. And the angle in the third quadrant is written normally as 180 plus an acute angle. I say normally because in my mind, I, I keep in my mind that now I don't have to change the function to co-functions because I'm working with a horizontal axis. So that becomes the tan of 180 plus 30 degrees, which is the uh, 210. Here I see 190, which again is in the third quadrant, 180 plus 10. But now 10 degrees is not a special angle. Immediately that tells me as soon as one of the angles is not a special angle, that tells me I am going to work with co-functions. I have no choice here because it's not, it cannot be written as a special angle. So I have no choice, so I know it will, um, I can write it in terms of uh, co-functions. Will they help me solve this problem? So, yes, let me write it again, the sign of, 180 plus 10 degrees. Remember, I have to prove that this is equal to that. Uh, sorry for this. I cannot say it is equal to that. This is my left-hand side of, the equa of this equation. And what I'm going to do of my technique in proving that is to simplify the left-hand side of the equation and my simplification must lead to whatever I have on the right-hand side. Fraction underneath the cosine of 100. Let's first rewrite the angle. Now immediately, there must click, something must click because 100 degrees is either 100 degrees in the first place is in the second quadrant. Now, the 100 I can break up in 90 plus 10, which will work, but then I must just keep in mind that now I'm going to work with a vertical axis. Or it is still 180 minus, <coughs> excuse me, minus 80. And in my mind, I see already the connection between 80 and the 10. If I don't want to work with a vertical axis, which I uh, prefer not to work with a vertical axis, uh, not that it really matters, but just to keep, to have one way of dealing with this. So I can write this as the cosine of 180 minus 80, which will be the 100, okay? So I in my mind, it clicks the 80 and the 10. It's co uh, complementary angles. So I'm going to work with co functions. 
sine of 120, keep the function, where is 120 in the second quadrant again. How do I write an angle in the second quadrant? 180 minus something, minus what? Minus 60 will be the 120. Okay, so there, first step, rewrite all the angles in terms of the quadrants in which they are lying. And now it's my reduction formulas all over again, just like the ones that we had here with the x's. So, fourth quadrant, what does the cast diagram say about sine in the fourth quadrant, which will be negative, and it remains the sine of 45 degrees, because I've worked with the, with the horizontal axis. Third quadrant, tan in the third quadrant, is positive, and it remains the tan of the acute angle, 30 degrees, yeah? because it is 180, I've worked with a horizontal axis. Here, yeah. third quadrant, sine in the third quadrant is negative, the sine of 10 degrees all over. Second quadrant, cosine in the second quadrant is negative, and it remains the cosine of 80 degrees, because I've worked with a horizontal axis. Times second quadrant again, 180 minus 60, Sine in the second quadrant is positive, and it remains the sine of 60 degrees. Now, I have three negative uh, sides which must be multiplied or divided. Therefore, my answer, my whole answer, will be negative. And now I'm looking at my special angles, my sketches with my special angles, in order to fill in the values. Of course, right at the start, I can say that the cosine of 80 and the sine of 10 degrees will be the same. Therefore, this one and this one will cancel as the same, and it divides into each other. Uh, note how I cancel the values with a broken line so that it is still clear what is there underneath. The sine of 45 degrees, there is my uh, triangle of 45 degrees, and I will see that it is 1 over the square root of 2, opposite over hypotenuse times the tan of 30. Tan, there is my equilateral triangle where 30 is. Tan, the opposite over adjacent, which will be 1 over square root of 3. And that has cancelled. I'm left with sine of 60 uh, underneath. And the sine of 60, of course, is the square root of 3 all over Two, eh, opposite over hypotenuse. And now I must, now it is uh, um, algebraic, um, not algebraic, sorry, it is just calculations. So here I will have 1 square root 2 times 1 oh, square root 3 multiplied, or the point, with 2 over square root of 3. That, of course, if I divide with a fraction, we all know that. It becomes multiplication. That's why I've used the multiplication sign so that we see it um, with the inverse. So I'm left here with 2 over square root 2 times 3. 
Of course, square root of 3 times square root of 3 will be 3. And now, learners, we all know the technique of what is called the rationalization of the denominator. That is why we must prove it's equal to that. So I have an irrational denominator here, and we all know, we have all done this in school, square root of 2 times 3 multiplied with square root 2 over square root 2 in order to rational, rationalize the uh, denominator. So I'm left with 2 square root 2 in the numerator, that is 2 times 3. I don't have to multiply it because I know that, oh, I've dropped the negative, sorry. So the 2s will cancel and I'm left with negative square root 2 over 3, which is equal to the right-hand side. And there I have proved that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. Um, let us see quickly. There's just a few minutes left. Perhaps I'm... Yes. The sum says in the diagram below, the third one, R is the point such that T, O, R is alpha. R, O is extended to P such that O, P is twice the length of O, R. T, O, P is beta, the, the magnitude is beta, and is given that sine of alpha is 3 over 5. Right, without using a calculator, this is the other one where the calculator is not supposed to be used, where we can we must use the sketch. So in the first place, learners, immediately we draw the right angle triangle with the line into the, the quadrant, the hypotenuse. And what they are saying is that the sine of this angle is 3 over 5. Of course, the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And immediately I must know to use the theorem of Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem from my tools, third one from the bottom, which says that 25, the square, square on the hypotenuse minus the square on that will give me this angle, square root of that. Um, of course, we all know what this is. Now, there will, will not be time to do this, but I must uh, focus your attention on this. Remember, these two angles are vertically opposite angles. And if I complete the triangle here towards the horizontal axis, then these two triangles are similar. And they say that OP is twice RO. Therefore, OP must be 10 units. And if they are similar, why are they similar? Because these two are vertically opposite. And this angle and that angle, of course, uh, will also be equal. Or that, and that will be equal. So this side... And that side, the ratios between these sides must be equal to each other. This is twice that. So this side must be twice that. And this side must be twice that. And just because it is on the negative side of the axis, of the vertical axis, please remember that the coordinates of P will be negative 8, although the side length is 8 and the side length is 6, the coordinates of P will be negative 8 and negative 6. Okay? You won't be penalized if you just put the negative sign there. 
Huh? You won't be penalized for doing that. And now I can calculate any values of that angle P, uh, beta, because I have all the three sides of the right angle triangle, which was formed by looking at this reference angle there. I know that it was a bit rushed, but this is trigonometry, and there are such a lot of concepts in trigonometry that we must familiarize ourselves with. And also, what is crucially important is to know the connections between the different things, the connections between the actual uh, degrees given, the Cartesian plane, the values in the Cartesian plane, and also the graphs of the, the different trigonometric functions, the sine graph, the cosine graph, and the tan graph, which, will, which also comes into play when we do the, 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 the simplifications of the trigonometric identities and expressions and etc. That brings to the end uh, the day. I thank you very much, and we'll see you again for the English session next week, Monday. Thank you.